Okay, uh, good afternoon, good day, Jin Dobre, if you're Polish uh, or sort of like a bit of an expat like me, drifting around Eastern Europe looking for a life. Um, I have the great um, privilege, actually, I'm very obliged to Mr. James Tusk, who has joined me here this afternoon. We're actually in London, in Borough Market. I'm doing a little bit of a, a winter day game season, trying to trying to deal with um, British birds, which are, are, a bit, are a bit challenging, wouldn't you say, James? I'd say absolutely. Um, I think we're saved by the fact it's a little bit mild and we've got a nice block bottle of red to, to, to ease the nerves because there's not much going around today. <laughs> no, excellent. The, the wine does, does help. So uh, James is somebody who was recommended to me, a good buddy whom I've been day gaming with for a couple of years now, uh, recommended as a solid bloke. A guy for the reg- a guy man for the people, regular Joe, and I, I met James for the first time a couple of weeks ago. And what interests me about James, he's uh, a young man, 25, 27, 30. So he presents well. He's a bit buff, you know, a bit rough shaven, but that's not the the secret uh, potion to day game success, as we all know. Um, and, but what was interesting about him was uh, he talks about normalisation of game, normalising day game, making it part of your life and not being such a sceptic and a, think it's such a sketchy thing. So we'll come up, that will be the main theme of today's podcast. We might touch on a bit of texting and we're also going to touch on a little bit of Kezia Noble and her take on day game because uh, James is one of, uh, in, certainly historically, you've worked with Kezia <clears throat> noble although james has now set up his own business he's got quite a strong on- online presence and what i liked about his videos on youtube is he wasn't he's not afraid to video himself being uh rebuffed uh, which is just a you know a, 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 a part of the journey you've got to get over um but he does it with style i think that's a really important thing is that if a girl says no you roll off in a sort of a stylish cool way so i will um just that, that's it, 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 I think, by way of introductions. I just need to make a, a little bit of an announcement, a little bit of a plug for myself, which is um, having done, you know, sort of 18 months, two years of acquiring the skills of day game, I'm, I'm producing a book, having produced a book, Too Late Mate, a day game memoir, which I'm told is hilarious and um, which is a bit worrying. But, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm told it's, uh, uh, it's raw uh, and it's, got, it's a roller coaster. Uh, but I'm just now bringing out a series of books, e-books, which will be free or 50p sort of thing, 12 of them to cover the 52 first dates that I've been going on in the past year. Uh, I'm now on date 34. I've learned a whole bunch of stuff, having realised that getting numbers is one thing, actually doing the business on the date is in a whole sort of next stage of evolution in a way. So, um, so perhaps, James, I could, uh, yeah, perhaps just simply ask you to tell us uh, what was the inciting incident that got you into this crazy journey sure so I was um, I guess the stereotypical good looking guy um, who would be standing in the corner of clubs around the age of sort of 24 downwards um, just not getting anywhere and you know to the uninitiated and, and as I thought there, I thought it was all about looks. So I was really confused because obviously from seeing it from a, a guy's point of view, when we look at a woman, of course we judge her predominantly on looks. But, you know, I guess not having the social and emotional intelligence to put myself in the, in the shoes of the opposite sex and, and understand they actually appreciate different things. I looked at myself and then I thought, hey, what the fuck's going on? I'm a good looking guy. And yet I was getting no action. Very frustrating. Um, and only later down the line, you know, after discovering game, did I, um, you know, you realise that looks whilst they're away in, they are not the be and end all. I know plenty of, of good looking guys that don't get late and I know plenty of, of stereotypically quote unquote ugly guys that get a lot of action. I, I, I do want to just interject there because actually that is a really interesting, important point. A lot of guys suffer from the idea that you have to be good looking and, yeah. and, and actually... Uh, I mean, just say a little bit more about that and why it is a fiction. Because guys listening are kind of saying, yeah, yeah, James, you look a handsome guy. I've seen you on YouTube. Let's be honest, that's what's attracting the girls. Yeah, so it's an interesting point. And I guess to guys looking for playing the victim mentality, looking for reasons why they can't succeed, but 
perhaps I can. They're obviously going to pinpoint looks. Look, I'm not going to lie. I, you know, I, I, I would recommend as a guy you absolutely maximise your looks. Things like dress well. Things like you know, have you have your skin looking good? If you've got acne, get light laser eye surgery, etc. Go to the gym. You know, be in good shape. These are all value adds to a woman, and it also um, signifies to other people you take care of yourself. And on a personal level, you know, if, if you're in good shape and you look good, you're going to feel good, and, and you're going to project that out, and people will buy into that. But you know, for example, if I, and I don't massively like using the number system, but if you class me as a male eight looks wise, uh, typically speaking, I'll get eye wide and I'll be able to easily sleep with girls below um, that tangent, so eight and below. But the girls that I want, and remember, game is all relative and 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 personally um, contextualised to the individual. I won't be able to get you know my nines and tens. I still have to know game to be able to do that. So, I think you know people forget that game is all relative and and looks alone um yeah while they while they might get me some girls that um i i've I've used beneath me that doesn't solve the problem in terms of you know the girls i'm actually looking to to get with you know you should always be looking to punch a few points higher than than what you view yourself as um and and that's why game uh, day game as itself is a very good value you know add mechanism to be able to go and see these girls but then again on the date you're still going to no- have to know game you can't just get away on, on being a good looking guy as happened in the past i was going out i got very good at the street stuff because i treated day game like a sort of party trick and then i'd have girls very hot girls coming out on dates and they would see right through me straight away because i had nothing to back it up no frame at all i was the scared little mouse and actually that was an incredibly frustrating part having these stunning girls out and getting absolutely nowhere on dates with them so that's a- another phase you have to learn if you think about the three phases of day game being the approaching, you know, being able to speak to any girl anywhere, anytime. The texting usually takes care of itself and the dating and relationship management as the third stage. Third stage, obviously, the most time consuming to learn. Yeah, that's spot on. And I, I wondered about that for a while. And then I spent some time with handsome guys who wanted to day game with me because I can be a bit of a crazy lunatic sometimes in terms of approach, street approaches. Um, you know 46 years relationship virgin it's not a bloody cork out of a bottle you know what I mean when I discovered this stuff Um, and I thought what I thought what I remember I actually said this to a couple of them one a a, a really handsome Greek dude in Warsaw another Scandinavian I was like what the fuck are you hanging out with me for you and and they were getting tinder success as well I was like why do you want to learn day game you've got these birds are coming around to your place at the drop of a hat fuck you and why do you want to learn day game? It took me a long time for the penny to drop that they actually were the guys at the bar who never chose the girls, average girls who weren't a higher caliber than them, chose them. They walked over to the bar and they never. And I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I felt I was a bit emasculated as a man from the past. I, it was interesting that they actually felt a little bit bit of a strong word but you know what I mean a little bit of their manhood they weren't being proper men yeah. because they were getting they were getting lots of success but they weren't choosing and they weren't getting the really class girls mm. yeah no completely agree and I think um, I guess the hard thing in, in life to do in any situation is, is use the social intelligence to put yourself into someone else's shoes and realize you know e- even though you're seeing a particular image it's not necessarily reflective of, of, of that guy being happy or that guy getting results um, and I know actually from experience, if you are a good looking guy, and I'm sure there's a few guys in shape and stuff out there that can resonate with this, that girls will expect more from you if you're good looking. And actually, if you don't have game, you're actually going to be um, treated harsher by women because they're expecting their nice and shining armor and you don't perform and they do not like it at all. And they really, they really tear into you. Um, whereas if you're not an attractive man in terms of how you look you know I'm, I'm saying take care of yourself but you're not you know quote unquote you know um, you're never going to be a cover model in terms of looks you can actually add more value to your own game because you're you come across incredibly confident if you understand game and understand what turns women on and that in turn is going to shock women but in a great way you're going to be able to sort of surprise women in a massive positive because they'll look at you expect nothing and then you have a good game they're going to be blown away by it so you know guys out there that aren't good looking you know I, I really wouldn't worry about it it's far more important you you get your own personal beliefs aligned and and you start believing in yourself and then regardless of what you look like you know that self-belief will shine through and, and you'll be able to attract any woman you want yeah uh good so here, here's a, a a segue into this question i'm just wondering if you were to sort of uh, distinguish yourself as your sort of strongest features or your what's the word your a approach and your sort of 
mission statement as a business, as it were, and the, the angles that you take, the approach that you take towards this stuff. Yeah. And we took. I when we sat and had a drink a couple of weeks ago in rather a cool little bar location, actually for dates. In um, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to give you the crown. We're not going to give you the crown jewels it's just on the first That's podcast. My date that's my date location, so please don't give that away. That's like, All right, that, like 100 girls there. <laughs> top secret. Um, so if you, if you do coaching with James, he'll give you free information on his top, top, uh, top date locations. So I, I just thought it was interesting what you said about normalizing day game. And I struggle with this on a daily basis going out there in the streets as I sometimes, you know, I, about two or three times a week I go out, perhaps over a lunch. I'm a working guy. Or take a break at three or four o'clock when I've just done enough work as a lawyer at my desk. I've just got to get out. Or rush around in the evening. But I still feel initially when I start doing that, this is weird. This is right proper weird. And I am a bit of a weirdo. And if I have a, a tough sort of start, and I went out yesterday actually to Waterloo Station and had a little bit of a tough time, um, you know, very quickly you can go down the weird plug hole I'm just interested in the, to ask the sort of the question. One cl- question of clarification before I give you the um, uh, give you the opportunity to reply is: when you say normalising, do you mean like um, normalising it into your day to day life, so making it part of your daily life, like in the long term, or do you mean like normalising it, like in terms of society, making it sort of socially acceptable and helping guys get over the the hang-ups and the ideas around the fact that it's not a conventionally traditionally accepted thing to do yeah okay so i think there's it's an interesting topic isn't it because i think there's two elements to it. first and foremost i think it's um you know my mission statement i guess as a coach moving forward is i think it's you know a prerequisite of any 21st century man uh, red bloody male that he should be able to go and say at least hi to a woman he finds attractive now at least high being at least just hello i mean ideally direct approaching so hey i think you look something about her that expresses your direct intent or through your subcommunication but at the very least you know i think the fact that men cannot say hello to a girl sober in this day and age is a testament to not the rise of feminism the patheticness of men to be honest men alone and longer men we don't have to go to war we live very cushy civilian lives and i think as a species i'm not surprised women are disillusioned with with men in the uk either i am i think the things you can learn from at least you know maybe going to eastern europe is is men are still men the gender roles are very defined and women that allows women to feel very feminine and it's a great thing to do and i think the problem with men in the uk us and notice i'm the same problem with men not women the problem with the men in the uk and the us and australia is we're, we're fucking soft i mean the fact that we cannot say hello to a girl without 10 tequilas down us in a bar is is a testament to the patheticness of ourselves rather than anyone else so again the you know the concept of extreme ownership take uh, control what you can it's us as men that need to be taking action so i'd say in terms of normalizing it i think it's the prerequisite of any man that in any situation you happen to see a girl that you are physically attracted to and there's nothing wrong with seeing a, a woman and and being attracted to her yeah well that the way you put it there makes like why would you ever question that a guy should not figure out how to go up to an attractive girl tell her she looks nice and open up a conversation um, and uh, perhaps that's we could stop the topic there in a way because that's we call it a day. that we could we could go home can we get drunk and finish this bottle of wine well, that's gonna happen, <laughs> I, uh, I guess a guy might be asking though hang on you're a coach Alex you're this guy I've read your book you got you approached a hundred girls I've got you know uh, um, or a thousand girls um, isn't it a bit weird the sort of the mechanical approach machine type 10 girls in a session and turning into kind of like a gym workout how do you answer that those critics yeah i think i think it is a bit weird in that sense and i think um to anyone else looking into your life you know when you're trying to do go down the self-improvement route they're going to question it as as are you probably because you feel weird as well i can tell you right now as a guy that's taught a lot of nine to fivers you're never not going to feel weird coming out of your, your office when you've been sitting there talking to Brian from IT about Shirley's tits, but then you actually have to go and speak to an attractive <laughs> woman sober on the street and you're stagnant as fuck. You're not sociable. Maybe you're lucky and you work in sales or 
you know, the brokerage or trading industry where you're constantly having bans with guys. But I'll tell you what, a lot of the time you don't and you don't have a wingman and you have to go and face this shit alone because a lot of your mates are settled down and married. And yeah, look, it is going to feel weird. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to look yourself in the mirror and go, am I banging the women I want to be banging? Do I have a limited time on planet Earth? If the answer to the first question is no, and the answer to the second question obviously is yes, then you need to go and do something about it. The most time efficient way I found, and I, you know, I have done night game before, uh, and I've tried um, social dating apps, but the most time efficient way, the most cost effective way, um, and the, the most way with side, we can go into them, but alternative side benefits is day game. So I, I, you start off as day game being this mechanical robotic structure that you do, you're giving lines, you, you, you have to learn them, but eventually it needs to become something you are. By that I mean you should be able to say hello to a girl in any situation. You know, the two set walking down the road, you say hello to that girl you find attractive. You know, the, the mum walking with her fucking dog in the park you say hello to, that massive group of girls. You pull one of them out of you say hello, that girl in the bar, the girl on the aeroplane, it doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't even matter if it's daytime. It could be a bar, it could be a hotel, it doesn't matter. You, you need to be, as a man, be able to own your desire and say hello and yeah, no, sorry to cut you, cut in there, Jez. But I kind of, I noticed that it's a very slow process. It's drip, drip, drip. Like I've been travelling between London and Warsaw, and I meet air stewardesses. I sit next to an attractive girl who's clearly on her own. I feel like a weirdo for sitting next to her, even though that's my seat. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I've started to have those conversations. I've started to sex, sexually, you know, flirt, basically, on a plane. Um, but it's gradual. I mean, I, I think guys have you have to be real about this. This is this is not just easily picked up. You need to put in the work to do this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think you know, without going into too much detail, uh, I made a video on this recently about how to become the uh, you know the the best version you can be of yourself. You've got the elements like um, you know, for, for for example, for me, you've got I was fashion illiterate for. 25 years yeah, of my life I find that really difficult to believe I find a little bit of the earlier stuff you were saying that you had trouble with attractive girls because I guess you never really get rid of the idea that you bought that was drilled into as a kid or at prep school I went to an all male boarding school yeah. that, and I put girls on a pedestal higher than the Duke of Nelson's column you know what I mean and I I I can never really believe you know I'm sitting here like nah come on mate you're fucking taking the piss but you're telling us honestly that you had difficulty in this area. I think there's, um, <laughs> if, I, if I'm being honest with you, I think um, as a guy, uh, especially if you're uh, listening to this and maybe you're sort of white middle class, grown up with some option, you have to be quite desperate to A, do day game in the first place in the sense that it's a very niche thing to take on. You have to be even more crazy about it, as in even more hooked on the results you're getting that you didn't previously had to then go into teaching it you know and a, a lot of my friends are just like jesus because they all you know i'm you know grew up went to a private school um they they all you know they're, they're all settled down with with wives that they cheat on occasionally in whorehouses but you know standard nice jobs accenture deloitte in y and they they look at me and they just think james what the fuck happened to you um you know that this concept of swallowing the red pill i guess is only applicable to me because they, they don't understand my reality they don't understand when you read something like the rational mail that your world is fucking blown and, and you can't go back to that sort of the, the previous oh i'm happy with that one girl you know the one slab of meat for the rest of my life i don't know where we're going with no, this no that's why i quite like this sort of digression because cul-de-sac because uh i, I just think that uh, um there is a need for guys you're listening here if you're uh, a guy just embrace your the fact you're a weirdo you know just embrace the fact now weirdo simply means anything that right now at this point in civilization or western civilization is not the done thing like there was a time when meditation was considered to be frigging weird I mean I you know you you had to be a bit weird to chant mantras and stuff like that now it's becoming quite fashionable in California it's that you're weird if you don't so what's interesting is just embrace the weirdo because you may not be a weirdo you're a weirdo now but in the future you'll be a pioneer of sexual civilization I think um, what's interesting I did a little talk with a, an international charisma coach a while ago um, maybe three months and what was interesting is prior to that I'd wanted to be on point with things that aren't necessarily game and I read a study 
I can't remember who it is by now, but it say, basically said millenn- most millennials now, the millennial generation, 65% of them, it was a study of about 20,000 people, are uncomfortable communicating to people face-to-face, and they prefer to meet someone online. I think if you can maintain yeah, that, social that's skills... That's weird in a way. That, that, that sounds weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> but I think if you can maintain social skills, you can learn to be very sociable in, in, in a number of situations, particularly if you grow up in places like the UK and the US where people are very alarmed on smartphones, people are, are brought up to be a little bit awkward awkward and shy, you're only going to stand out more being the charismatic guy that is able to talk to people in any situation. Day game, I, I, I think we need to move away from the concept of day game as this weird niche thing, or what I'm trying to push at least, is that day game is about you. It's about, are, are you comfortable socialising in any situation I put you into? Can you honestly say if I put you in a room with three Victoria's Secret models with the lights fully on, and you know, would you be comfortable talking to them, making conversation with these women for an hour? Don't give me the, oh no, I'll just have a fucking force and bullshit. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Would you be comfortable having a conversation with three hot, smokingly hot models, they're all mates, and you're put into that scenario? Because if you wouldn't, you need to work on your, your social skills. I mean, that's, that's so interesting, because I think that there's the big idea that I can't, I just wonder whether or not ultimately it's really about all this work that we do is about ultimately just uh, being relaxed with normal conversation like we are chatting here exactly. a couple of mates having a cu- b- bottle of wine and it's impossible almost to believe that that could be the go- the holy grail towards um, you know this is this is a show that's PG-15 so I can't use dirty language but is it, could- it really? well not really is it? Um, what what PG is right? it? probably PG I, I, I've lost touch with the film consent, classification age of consent above 15 so it'll have to be an 18 age of consent above 15 so I guess it'll have to be an 18 18 rated I don't know yeah this probably is proper 18 isn't it but I mean the point is can, here's a question here's a, a floating an idea you um, the, 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 the key to unlock the golden palace of pleasure with hot girls who are higher, classier, younger than you, fitter than you are, maybe simply to go through this kind of process of applying skills that then let you throw away the process and then let you simply be yourself. But big caveat: don't 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 listen to guys who are selling you the be yourself ticket. That's what, that is a lot of nonsense. But ultimately, that is actually what you end up being. Um, it's a shame that you're not a hot woman, James. Actually, can't really talk about it now. But that's the, and and actually, here's a question for you: Do you think the women find that sexually attractive? Sexually, what, so which? What? What are we asking? If women, well, if if guy has actually learnt to be, he may be fat, bald, you know, whatever, all sorts of hang-ups, physically, but yet he's actually just being normal in the company of a woman and being himself and having a glass of wine and talking about what he wants to talk about. You know what I mean? And having a chat like it is with a mate, is a girl going to find that attractive? It depends, I, I think, on the situation. And I think, you know, I, I think there's a couple of elements to address here. So I think there is a, there is a school of thought, and, and I advocate this, that you should aim to be the best version of yourself in, in a number of categories without going in too much into detail. You know, financially healthy. So uh, as, a, as a man living in London, if you're educated, you should be earning at least 90k a year. Um, I don't think there's any excuse in this day and age um, if you have an education not to be doing that. And I think if you don't want to work for someone else, which I don't want to do any longer, then you should have the means to do something like what I'm doing. I mean, I make my money through um, drop shipping um, and I'm looking to set up a film business on Amazon and I teach guys to do game. And, and what that does is it gives me that freedom to do what the fuck I want. Um, but I think as a base level, I think there's been studies as well which show over, over something like over 80 grand a year then... The, the benefits much beyond that aren't um, extravagant but up to that level you know you kind of need it's like ha- you're, you're creating unnecessary wealth aren't you that you probably have to s- cause you more f- headache than it's yeah. worth yeah. but beneath that then you, it's kind of still be a, an element of stress I think you're, you need your emotional mental health in order at the end of the day it, it sounds like a massive cliche but if you don't like your, if you don't like what you see in the mirror trust me women aren't going to like you yeah, now here's the interesting thing. Now, a fat balding guy might look himself in the mirror and say, "Wow, fuck me!" You know, he is the business. Um, is is he going to get girls? Absolutely, yeah. 
So what's interesting is you probably need to work on the physical side only if it's a problem for you that's giving you bad ideas about yourself. Yes and no. At the end of the day, look, if, if you if you got women in a room, got gave them a few glasses, Chardonnay, Lambrini, and go, look, what do you find more attractive, the rippling six-pack or the, the man, uh, the dad bod? She's going to go rippling six-pack, but... Alex makes a very good point whereby if you absolutely own what you have you know own the cards you're dealt then you will be attractive anyway because you're giving out that element of complete self-belief complete self-assuredness and people will buy into that do you have any experience of that amongst your clients um yeah a couple of guys that I taught um they're not good looking guys they're not in good shape but because they're they give out they have a real joy de vie they have a real love of life and they have a real um they're just good guys to be around you can't pinpoint it they could be talking about the fucking weather being rainy in London but they're doing it in such a way that you just enjoy listening to them Um, and I I think without going too Tony Romadzi and and self-developmenty I think vibe and and just your your own love of life and what you make of life is so important because at the end of the day a woman is going to buy into your reality when a woman comes to you and when you start banging her and sticking a dick in her and dating her she becomes part of your reality your interests become hers she takes in on that form you know you've created your world for yourself and you have to love the world you operate in and that will suck women into that vortex and they want to be a part of that but if you have nothing else apart from you know charge around trying to hit on, on girls all day there's nothing there the, the woman's just going to be like there's nothing behind that you know there's nothing behind that wall it's just empty so I, my favourite expression is a thorn to remove a thorn. That what we do, what you teach, what I've learned, what I'm learning is a thorn. And that once you've kind of removed the thorn, you throw away the thorn. If you've got a thorn in your finger and you use a thorn to get rid of it, you can get another thorn to get rid of the thorn. Yeah. But then once the thorn's removed, you don't hold on to the thorn, you throw it away. And that actually a lot of what we, you, I don't teach, but what you are coaching is about you've got to go through the and Tom Torero talks about this and um, that you, you put up a scaffolding yes. around the building but then once the building is built you, you don't yeah so I think it's a very good point and Tom does mention this a lot and he's, he's very true that you know you'll have certain lines and for three months yeah use those to get confident and understand the behaviours between why things work but at the end of the day you want to be giving yourself a set of um, creative tools whereby you can go around and, and utilise different things so for example um, for me now when I teach guys I say go up go direct but then I say I don't give them any more than you have to create stereotypes around their nationality and if the guy doesn't know what stereotypes of countries are I go and send him home and just go look mate go and read up and then you come back yeah I mean actually a lot of guys are a bit shy of the homework but this is work and if you want to crack it you've got to go home and do, do some work haven't you I think I think every guy should you know if, if you really think about um, European countries it's not rocket science like if I just came up with a country right now say Lithuania I think you know, you should be able to say at least one thing about it, but um, something that for a girl isn't going to be like, oh, you know, the capital's Vilnius. It's going to be like a, a dish or, or an activity they do. You know what I mean? That, that's interesting. And coincidentally, I was on a date at, at lunch, 12 o'clock, with a Lithuanian girl, 23-year-old. I, I, I offer, I'm always like, what the fuck is she doing with me? I'm an old bastard who's See, this getting a bit fat. That's missing. This is the self-belief we need to get installed. I, I need some coaching with Mr. Tusk. Um, but... Yeah, I had a date with a Lithuanian boy at 12 o'clock, and the skills do the work. And by the end of that date, she was doing, she was going, oh, like that. You know what I mean? You know it's good when she starts slapping you. I just, sorry, for I just slapped James. She actually slapped me on on the arm. And at the end of the date, she said, so uh, what, what, when are we going to meet again? I mean, she was pretty overt. That sounds like you've done a really good job there. But I was lucky because I live in Poland, so I know a little about Lithuanians and neighbour. So I had the key, the, the key knowledge about I could throw in little bits about Lithuania into the conversation. But this is this is great. So, for example, I met an Estonian girl the other day uh, from Tallinn in London, and I immediately started taking the piss out of her, going, you know, the Finnish guys are going to come and like try on with you because the stereotype in um, Finland and Estonia, which countries are very close, is the Finnish guys they all get the ferry over on pub crawls at uni, oh, right? and they start just drinking all the booze <laughs> and hitting on the locals because it's like that much cheaper. So, but by by caveating your knowledge in a funny thing that's going to be applicable to her it's great because it ropes her into the conversation yeah oh. knowledge is priceless so we, we ought to move on now and I know that anybody listening to this and if you've surfed uh, James Tusk and you've looked at his YouTube videos you will see uh, and I do recommend by the way that you look at a YouTube video he did 
with Kezia Noble, in which you give a little bit of a masterclass to a group of guys. I can't remember what. What should guys Google in order to get to that video? Um, I, I, to be honest, uh, I think if you just put Kezia Noble in, it's, it's one of her most searched recent videos. Um, maybe put Kezia Noble, how to take her home or something like that. I actually find it quite difficult to find. I think because it's so recent, it's got, hasn't got many hits, it doesn't get to the top of the list. But I was quite interesting. I actually, I actually deployed a James Tusk tip into my dating routine barely two weeks ago with a 22, 23-year-old Ukrainian um, blonde, although I don't know if it was real blonde. You never know, do you? I'm not that. And uh, I, the truth game is a great little game that you play. You can play on dates. Uh, and um, we've been messaging since the date. It's been pretty good. But I, uh, I, I use the immortal question: Have you ever kissed a girl? I think that just a, by way of a little bit of a tip for guys, just say a little bit more about the effectiveness of the, the truth game on dates. Yeah, so the question game, it's been around the community for a while. And to sum up, it's basically a game you should play on dates to verbally escalate. So you've got the physical escalation in place. We won't go through that today because we don't have time. But um, verbally, so you're going to introduce the game as I adventurous. Uh, do you want to play a game? The girl's going to go, yes. You're going to go, right. The only rules are no boring questions. And you've got to be totally honest. And the, the way the game is played is you ask a question. And then she should ask you a question back. But if she doesn't, um, as a lot of Eastern Europeans don't because they think they're all prim and proper you just then fill in the answer for, so for example yeah, that's true you'll often get a oh no I'm not, I don't want to play this you ask or, you know. and then you you know because again it's, it's, it's masculine to lead so you just you, you would answer the same question and then you ask another so it keeps the game rolling on it's a great thing to do like guys go out and they start talking about the careers and her careers and look no one gives a shit she's come out one on one um, to see you after a day game set she's attracted do not talk about the cool career she's there she's there to be taken home and I think a lot of guys fuck up on that and but things things I'll ask so the, the opening gambit I always go for which I just find quite fun just for my own interest is um, so say we, we've got married um, we've eloped to California you found me <laughs> fucking the French maid and you, you've put a knife in my chest <laughs> Sorry. buried a knife right into the centre of my chest you're, you're on death row you've been obviously you're going to die it's your last day on planet earth you have your your, your death row meal your starter your main and your dessert and your, you get one alcoholic drink what would you have and the girl's like I'm fascinated by this because it's getting her thinking it's getting her projecting it's so much more fun than just going out on a date going oh uh, so um, what do you do in your spare time then you oh know. my god yeah. And it, 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 the crazy thing is, the tool will do the work for you. Don't worry, you're going to be nervous. It's like going on stage on a date. But if you've learnt this stuff, you just apply it. You've done your homework, and you've done your preparation. It, you know how, I, I don't know about you, perhaps you don't get nervous. I get really nervous. Today I was really nervous about going on the date. It's like 30, date 34 in my 52 first date project. And then when I went through the date, but I said, don't worry, Alex, trust the system, trust the method. And it was amazing how the course of it was only a 50 minute date because it was during a lunch break. The, me, the skills actually do fucking work. I mean, isn't that ridiculous? Absolutely, but it's, you know, it's good, again, not, not becoming too reliant on specific lines, but understanding why the, the difference between a beginner guy and an intermediate guy is understanding why things work and then being able to come up with stuff based on that. So, you know, you've got a date structure, but understanding that you can trust your gut. I used to lose girls going on dates and thinking I had to go through a certain routine when the girl was basically screaming to be pulled home. And my gut was telling me that, but I ignored it because I think I have to do pick-up routines and shit. And then I, you know what, I end up missing the window I could have banged her in. And But it's a learning lesson. So, you know, it, I think that's intermediate is understanding when you can move away from just lines and routines to, to understanding the principles and then being able to apply your own yeah, stuff. But I think you do need to just basically be a little bit of a boring st diligent student and apply the skills and then you do it enough times oh oh right i understand there's a principle here yes. for me to oh exactly. the penny drops but it, you have to go through a lot of kiss a lot of frogs yeah yeah uh, slay now a lot of, uh, slay, <laughs> slay a lot of demons dragons yeah. exactly yeah um slightly better analogy did we, frogs, did frogs yeah i did yeah did you want to talk about something on kezia or yeah, I did. And before we conclude, and there's just a couple of topics that we just have to park and do on another day, because you're jetting off to Thailand tomorrow. Tomorrow I am, yeah, for some lady boys. For some lady boys. Um, that's kind of that's thrown me sideways a bit. Right, um, 
Yeah, I, I wanted to talk about texting. I wanted to talk about my own personal sticking points, but I think we'll do that on another day. It's up to you if you want to keep going. But no, well, I do want to just, before we wrap up, we'll, we'll, we'll do another podcast in a while on the texting and my sticking points. Um, I think, but, but finally, before we conclude, I just, cause since you have worshipped at the altar of Kezia, I would like you to, and, and let's be honest, she's, she's a, a, a real success. And I've heard her, and I think she's, I love her, she's direct. However, I do criticise her in day game. Not her, but I say that beginner should not go with Kezia Noble. So here's a little bit of confrontation here because you work with Kezia, or you did. I'm intrigued, yeah. And I think that the last thing you need to do is find an attractive presence online because guys are a, 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 um, are supremely skilled at kidding themselves. And they will think that they are learning this stuff by watching videos of an attractive female coach and then paying money to spend time in her company and i think for for an intermediate who's sort of, or more experienced guys succeed has got some success in this he's strong and confident enough that he doesn't he can meet kezia and probably get some good tips a lot of good tips from her but i i really have a big be warned sign about approaching female coaches and i'll also say one final thing it isn't just me i'm just parroting tom torero which will make a lot of you laugh out there because i spent the first two years of my life worshiping at the altar of tom torero um you don't go to the fish for advice on how to catch the fish you go to the fisherman would you like to say a little bit about kezia and, and her advice and i want to just say Perhaps during the course of your answer, you just touch on this issue. Do you have the same approach towards a girl that you want to make your girlfriend as you do to a girl you want to have fun with? Okay. Yeah, sure. So, um, Kezia, you know, from you know, I've, I've worked for her for about two years. I do a bit of freelance stuff for her still. Um, she is good, and I think the reason she's good is because she's managed to separate. Uh, to, basically to, to sort of counteract the, the analogy you gave of, of never trust the fish I, I, I actually agree with that a, standard, a bog standard girl you know hot, you know, it doesn't matter if they're hot or not but trying to give you dating advice yeah don't listen to a fucking word they say they have no idea what they find attractive and they say one thing and do another anyway but because Kezia has had to make this her, her business I believe actually she's she's pretty on point with the stuff she teaches and also um, she outsources to people like me who actually know what they're talking about. So yeah, it's like, I mean that's quite good. She's kind of figured it out, hasn't she? She's a she's a very smart businesswoman, and you know what? Um, all respect to her. Um, I don't know her an incredibly, incredibly well on a personal level, but she's very switched on. She's very good at what she does, and yeah, she's to be honest, she's probably one of only two female dating coaches I would trust with the information she's putting out. Yes. If you look at her videos, yes, there is a lot of tit on show. Yes, a lot of desperate guys. If you're using it to bash off with a box of Kleenex at night, don't watch it. Get out on the streets and, and do your thing. But, you know, if you're supplementing, you're taking action with a little bit of theory, hers isn't actually the worst on the market. And, and, and the advice people like me give in, in collaboration videos with her is actually pretty good. So what and now what, what does she say about, and you say, we'll answer this both if you can, about... Do you use, this, this comes up again and again, and it came up with a, the guy who introduced me to him recommended that I do a podcast with you, who's a successful day gamer, and he's proper, I've been out with him, he's like, he does not fuck around chatting in the street, he approaches girls, he's not there to talk to me a mate, um, and he says, James is interested in the birds, and getting, um, You'll probably listen to this, and I won't use your name, but you know who you are. No, he's, uh, he's, uh, the nickname I use from now on is called the Fat Controller, and, 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 of account of his <laughs> oh, industry. No, that's so unfair, because he's moved jobs. But, um, <laughs> so, you are, he's the Fat Controller, you're the, the naughty, mis you're Mr. Mischief, at this stage in your life, anyway. Do you think the same rule, and, uh, and, and I'd also like to know what, Kezia would say about this if she was here do you think it's the same techniques the same skills that you should apply to get, get two different results so if you're going for the one night stand or the, the girlfriend in my opinion um, yes 
because I think in terms of a power dynamic shift without making it you know too theoretical at the end of the day the, the girl holds all the cards until you sleep with her and then after that the power switches to you so the quicker you sleep with the girl the more powerful position you are then to decide you know what's going to happen the danger is the caveat to this is it's an interesting one because I've done that before and you know, girl is then had a one night stand with me and, and never wants to come back. Yeah, buyer's remorse, they call it, don't they? Absolutely. So it's 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 kind of a there's no broad brush approach, I'd say, like I'd love to give one, but it's it's a case by case basis because some girls when I I think they're really hot and I, I really get on with them personally, I I almost insinuate I wanna fuck them, but I don't take try and take them home because I don't want that thing of them thinking, Oh, I can never see the guy oh, again, okay. what have I done? So, so it's So even you actually moderate or calibrate when faced with a girl you're actually thinking maybe I'd like to spend more time with her I say that until I have a few tequilas and I'm just horny as fuck and I'm just like well that's gone out of the window he's, he's not allowed to break free of his, his, his image as a sexual stud so I, I guess that's a fair, fair answer yeah um, I mean I, I don't know what else you want to cover but there's a well just Kezia Noble would you, have you ever asked her that question asked her that question well, what would, would you teach? would you like to come back to mine and sit well, on my well, face well it's the same set of <laughs> 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 okay, there's another two podcasts in the series, the James Tuss series. No, but um, do, you, do, do you know what she might say about that? What she advice she gives to guys? Because you know, older guys are interested in a relationship, younger guys are interested in having fun. Um, to be honest, I, I can't comment. I haven't, um, okay. I haven't watched all her stuff. But I would like to say a couple of points. I've, I've recently finished. I'm not big on recommending game books, and I have no affiliation to this guy. Um, and I, I believe actually. He's, he's anonymous, he's out of the game now. But I was reading, it's on Amazon, £2. Uh, really recommend people read it. It's called The Book of Pook. And it, uh, it it's similar to a sort of Rodo Tomasi. I think he took some concepts from it. It, it paints a broad brush, um, I guess, image of, of how you become become the best version of yourself. Not in a help, self-help way, just in a sort of, you know, fuck it, we only live once way. And also to then maximise the amount of, of, of or the, the quality of the women you're getting with. But his three key takeaways, which I... I I've got it in my brain at the moment, so I just thought I'd spew them out to you guys because it's very useful. Is the only thing, three things you need to know, the only three keys you need to know to unlock women, and I guess this falls in line with using tools rather than specific lines. Is number one, embrace your masculinity. If you see that girl, you are allowed to to think she's attractive. You are allowed to imagine bending her over. Um, if you if you if you feel bad about that, that's your issue, not hers. Wh- women are very sexual beings. They want to be sexualize yeah uh, well that's the whole topic of sticking points for me but carry on so number two um women are children um up until you know the 1800s and, and before they they were legally classed as children for a reason um they they're, they're, they're very present they love to have fun treat women as children if they behave badly withdraw attention because that's a girl's crib tonight if they behave well reward them all this shit about acting disinterested for girls blatantly like you know bought you bought you a drink or or turn up see you looking really hot is, is stupid advice it's, it's contradictory it conditions someone the wrong way just on a basic psychological level treat them like children what would you do with a child if they if they misbehaved you would slap them or or pay no attention if you if they behave well you'd, you'd reward them yeah very good and your third and final point oh yeah and just in line with the second point as well is, is have fun um, have as much fun as you can women are, are massively drawn to fun they don't want to hear about your views on life they don't want to hear about your bitcoin and cryptocurrency like markups from the day really are you sure because I have a really interesting life and career and my mother loves me doesn't she want to hear about that unless it's resulting in you buying her a Rolex later that evening she doesn't want to hear about it well, um, what about a Russian? I had a girl ask the other week ask me for a diamond ring before she would sit with me. No, are you joking? That's I mean that's insane. Um, the the third point. I bought a one twenty four carat and a, a Tarara, and I've flown her to Monaco for in a five star Hilton hotel in my helicopter. But it's not even the Grand Prix. You should have waited for that. You know, final icing on the cherry on top. I'm the trode. I am intractably a trode. Um, the third. That was the third. No, no, no. Third and final point is be the prize. So this this falls. <laughs> in. That's just a, a corny cliche, but cliches do have a, a grain of truth in them. So it falls in line with what I'm, you know, what I'm, what I'm about, which is, you know, being the best in all areas. You know, your, your emotional health, your financial health, your your physical health. You know, you've got passions outside of game. You know, um, and th- when you when you have all your shit on point. 
and there's no reason, you know, moulding yourself into that, that ideal image of yourself, you know, yeah. you only live once, why wouldn't you, like a sort of clay, clay piece, make yourself the best thing, then yeah. you can be the prize. You wouldn't want women to be the centre of your life, uh, uh, you know, for 80 years that you're on the planet, would you? No. And equally, if you combine that sort of prizing mentality, so a bit of cockiness, but with um, real fun, and she's treating uh, girls like children, not taking them too seriously, it's kryptonite. You know, you, you, will, you will clear up. So start employing that as, as a test almost. I, that's it. That's the end of the podcast. That's a really good place to end. I'll link the. What did you just? What the, what the world of? The the book. Sorry, the book. Uh, the book. So it's on Amazon. I've, I've got no affiliation with this guy, so don't screw me for that. Um, but it's just really good. Um, I think he discontinued like five years ago. It's called Book of the Book of Pook. It's two pounds on Amazon. Okay, thanks. The Book of Pook. I'll link that under the in the description box under the podcast. It it only remains for me to invite Mr. Monsieur Tusk. Is that your real name? Monsieur Tusk is not my real name, but it's, 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 it's very close, actually, the surname to Tusk, yeah. To let you know where he can be found, and are you prepared to disclose pricing? Um, <laughs> well, it's not... I don't mind. Uh, I'll, I'll, so, yeah, so I'll give a vague estimate. Again, I'm, I'm trying to give value to guys. I, I enter this industry. I've been taught for a number of companies, but I enter it on my own recently set up my own youtube channel because i think i can give decent value and i've been around it for a long time but if you just google james tusk on youtube you can probably learn all the day game you need i give as much free advice as i can um to help you guys on your way on your own but if you do fancy coaching um, i operate out of london i charge about 429 pounds for five hours um and you do an introductory session for was it 97 or 100 pounds or something yeah 97 pounds for 19 years but to be honest um if you are based abroad or you fancy hitting on women that aren't, um, you know, the British hogs that we you, you're better off riding to battle than actually bang, then have a look at my, go on project com and have a look at my international boot camp section, which is based, I only take two students away, and it's very reasonable pricing, it works out about half the price per hour of a London boot camp. Two yeah. students, um, we're just going to be doing solid day game, and I've set these boot camps up in the places with the world's hottest women, so think yeah. Ukraine, think Serbia, think um, Rio think california you know these really good spots yeah so thanks james uh, thanks for hanging out this afternoon polishing off a bottle of wine and i i just want to say that i met a lot of i say meet a lot i've met a few in the last four years professionals you know got, got coaches and you don't have any cynicism or disillusionment about this area of uh, of, of life and i've met guys in the industry who do and um, and finally, on the pricing side of things, uh, I mean, you do get what you pay for. And um, I'm not selling, James. I've not got. I mean, met him this twice, and I've got. Um, but uh, you know, uh, there you go. I, I, I will say no more. But uh, there you are. I don't know what else to say other than to draw this. Would you like to say something else? Yeah. You've had too much red wine. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to. He's, he's got me. Uh, he's got me in his frame. He's, you know, <laughs> like a rabbit in the headlights. Right, guys. So there you go. Uh, don't forget about this ebook, which I'll be publishing over the next couple of months. It'll be on Amazon, and it'll be in 12 parts, and it'll be called 52 First Dates, and hopefully it will go into telling you both the amusing stories of the dates that I've been on this year as well as some tips because I'm going to put in a supplementary chapter at the end of each uh, each book each part of these 12 this 12 part series about sort of like tips and methods that I've applied from people like James as well as others and that have actually worked in practice so okay uh, that's goodbye from me cheers guys uh, been a pleasure and yeah if you fancy charging around the world in 2018 with me give me a shout and um, we can have a chat about the bootcamp Righto, bye bye.